The 10 o'clock news starts right now. Rain like we've never seen before. That's what the governor is saying Hurricane Florence could bring. And he has a warning for everyone in South Carolina. And from bread to fuel to generators, businesses are selling out as people gear up for Hurricane Florence. How it could impact your next trip to the store, coming up. Winds are starting to pick up as this monster storm approaches. We have live team coverage from Myrtle Beach tonight and a look at how the low country is bracing for possible disaster. And we are tracking Hurricane Florence tonight. Want to give you a live look in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, as they brace for the storm along North Carolina's coast. The National Weather Service says more than 10 million people are under either hurricane watches or warnings tonight. This is a satellite image of Hurricane Florence. Right now, it's about 330 miles from Wilmington, North Carolina. Now, while the storm has weakened slightly, making it a Category 3 hurricane, there's still major concerns, not only for the coast, but also our entire viewing area. Good evening, I'm Cody Alcorn. And I'm Diana Watson. And we thank you for being with us. And we have been keeping a very close eye on the track of Hurricane Florence. Chief Meteorologist Kendra Kent has been in the Weather Center all day long. And Kendra, what's the latest on this storm as it gets even closer to the coast? Well, you know, this storm is weakening a little bit, but it's still a powerful Category 3 hurricane. And we're beginning to pick up the radar echoes that are pushing closer to the coast. So now we're beginning to see those rain bands at least approach. And that rain will get going into tomorrow for those areas along coastal North Carolina. A northwest movement at 16 miles per hour, so it's kept a pretty good pace today. And you can see on the enhanced satellite image, the eye has become less defined. It's in a little bit of a rebuilding phase right now, and it has weakened quite a bit. And to give you an idea of just how far off we're talking, we're looking at about 272 miles off the coast uh, as it will be making its approach tomorrow, most likely making a landfall sometime toward Friday morning. If it does, it may end up kind of skirting along the coast, but it would still put North Carolina on the worst side of it. Here, circling the area that would see the worst surge on the right side of that path as that Category 3 storm approaches land. Then it would move on shore, and most models do carry it through South Carolina, weakening it to a depression as it reaches our area. So there it is Friday, a Cat 3 near Wilmington. Saturday, a Category 1 near Myrtle Beach potentially could die farther south than that but most of the models do start to carry it in and move it right over our area into Sunday and Monday with the areas to the right of that track being the most vulnerable for the heaviest rain and possible severe weather. So bottom line landfall could happen late tomorrow night early Friday somewhere along Wilmington uh, the, along the coast lower coast of North Carolina or northern coast of South Carolina but that would likely happen toward late Friday if it did in South Carolina. Carolina. Upstate rain and wind will be possible on Sunday and Monday. Let's break it down. I had a lot of you asking me, so Friday, is it looking bad? Saturday, is it looking bad? Well, Friday should be okay. In fact, Thursday and Friday both look like almost normal days around here, but we're going to see a breeze pick up a bit on Friday to about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Mostly cloudy skies, just spotty showers. By Saturday, will begin to feel some effects as that storm is making landfall along the coast and beginning to move inland. 25 to 35 mile per hour wind gusts. Inconvenient, but not dangerous wind just yet. And a localized flood threat as we do have some isolated strong storms possible. Sunday, that's when we would get the widespread heavy rain. Potential for tropical storm force wind gusts and isolated severe weather. Not expecting a huge severe weather threat, but tornadoes cannot be ruled out. By Monday, there would be lingering rain and possibly still a flood threat if we've already seen quite a bit of rainfall. 25 to 35 mile per hour gusts. It's going to take a while for that wind to start calming down, but then a lower severe weather threat. Latest computer models keep most of the heavy rain just east of our area. Look at the difference between Charlotte and Greenville. Eight inches versus two, about two and a half inches. It's all about where that track goes. Right of that track or northeast of the track will be the heaviest rain. And we will be pinpointing that track even closer over the next couple of days. Of course, you can always download the Fox Carolina News app for the latest track as well as those spaghetti models, everything that we're getting 
coming in every couple of hours on this storm. And of course, check in on the morning news for the latest from 4.30 to 9, because as we've experienced with this storm, there are pl plenty of changes just about every single update. In the last few, we haven't seen anything hugely significant, uh, but one good sign is that at least we haven't seen Category 4 on that track in a little while, which is, a, again, a good thing. It's still going to be terrible for the coastline. Yeah, anytime we can bring those numbers down, Kendra, Absolutely. it's at least a little reassuring, but of course, still a lot to watch out for, and those rain totals really disturbing, too. Of exactly. We'll check in with you soon. And we do want to get to our team coverage tonight that continues now in Myrtle Beach, which is bracing for the storm as Hurricane Florence makes its way toward the Carolina coast. Fox Carolina's Brooklyn Cromer is live at the boardwalk. So, Brooklyn, have you seen any changes heading into tonight? Well, the wind has fluctuated on and off throughout the day, but one thing that we've really noticed over the last couple of hours are the waves that you see here behind me. They are getting more and more rough by the hour, and we know that this is just the very beginning, and those conditions are expected to get much worse. Earlier, I talked to emergency management, and they say the window for people to get out is closing in, and if anyone is on the fence, they should leave now. And it seems like many people have taken those words seriously following the, following the governor's mandatory evacuation order yesterday. A few people are still around today making last minute preparations, boarding up windows and putting sandbags outside doors. At this point, nearly every restaurant, grocery store and gas station is shut down and a lot of people have already left town, but some are still planning to ride out the storm. Emergency management says tropical storm force winds will start tomorrow and once that happens, it will be unsafe to leave. They tell me people should also be prepared to be without power for a long Long time, and those who stay should have supplies like a generator, flashlights, and plenty of water and food on hand. They say emergency officials won't be able to respond until winds have died down to a certain level, but will get to people as soon as it's safe. But the bottom line here is that it's safe to leave right now, but it needs to happen soon. I talked to some people who were on the fence but are planning to leave tomorrow and urge others to as well. We've talked to some people. There's some people that actually live on the coast out uh, here on the beach, and they said they're going to ride it out. Uh, my opinion is I would, but, you know, everybody has to do their own thing. I just hope they're safe and hope they get to high ground if then it does get worse. And shelters are still open for anyone needing a place to, st to stay. Some local schools and churches are keeping their doors open for anyone that needs a place to go. Now, we'll continue to bring you live coverage and bring you um, updates here from the coast. Reporting live in Myrtle Beach, Brooklyn Cromer, Fox Carolina, the 10 o'clock news. Brooklyn, thanks so much for that. And as people along the coast continue to prepare for Florence's arrival, its new track is causing concern not just there, but across the state. Governor Henry McMaster is saying this hurricane could bring historic rainfall across the state. And Fox Carolina's Madison Stiles is live in Columbia tonight. So Madison, tell us more about what they're talking about tonight and more about those plans, not only for the coast, but also statewide. Yeah, Diana, well, we're in the Emergency Operations Center right now, and I can tell you these guys behind me, and there were a lot more of them earlier, but they have been working all throughout the day, all throughout the week, really, just to make sure we have the latest updates. But in a press conference earlier today, Governor McMaster stated South Carolina has never seen rain like we're expecting to see from Florence. Over 300,000 people have already evacuated from the coast. That's the South Carolina coast, but they're urging even more to get out. Officials are saying the storm will impact all of South Carolina, including the upstate, with multiple inches of rain and strong winds. And McMaster said even those living inland in areas that usually flood should plan to go somewhere safer, even if there hasn't been an evacuation order, order in that area. When this hurricane gets to land, it is liable to stop there, to continue its flow of rain on us, but to move very slowly and may even come down the South Carolina coast. So we will have water coming down the rivers from North Carolina for the heavy rain there as well as in our South Carolina rivers and streams. 
Now they are continuing to send crews and other assets to the coast, including a federal military helicopter and two Navy ships, which is a first for South Carolina. But again, they are still saying this is a very unpredictable storm, and everyone here is in contact with local and state officials across the board trying to get the message across. But um, they say Team South Carolina is going to be as prepared as possible for this storm. Um, but if there's one message the governor really wanted to get across today, it's if, if you were in those evacuation zone areas or really anywhere where you think you were unsafe, he says your best bet right now is just to go ahead and get out while you can. We're live in Columbia, Madison Stiles, Fox Carolina, the 10 o'clock news. And lane reversals will end tomorrow. Troopers will start breaking down those barricades on I-26 and Highway 501 at noon. Crews will open back up 501, and then at 6 p.m., I-26 will be back to normal. So if you're in the area, pay attention to the directions of those troopers. Both operations are expected to take around four hours. Well, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper has been reminding people there today that it was really the last day to evacuate, telling residents if they they haven't gotten out at this point, well, it may be time to start taking cover. Three quarters of a million to one million North Carolinians have been asked to evacuate. If you aren't under evacuation orders, now's the time to finish preparations and get ready to hunker down. The governor also says he has activated even more National Guard soldiers. As of tonight, 2,800 of them have reported for duty. And of course, we will have continuing coverage around the clock, on air and online, as Florence comes our way. You can see all of the latest hurricane models and how it could impact your area on our website, foxcarolina.com, as well as on our Facebook page and on the Fox Carolina News app. Go ahead and get that. You can get updates on the go. Well, patients evacuated from coastal hospitals are being relocated to our area. We're live with the impact on the local ERs. Plus, I've never seen anything that has this one-two punch. Hopefully it won't be as bad as we think, but uh, hope's not a strategy. Strong words from South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. Why he's saying Florence is the most dangerous combination of wind and rain he's ever seen. And we are live in Myrtle Beach tonight. And one reason you can tell this is a serious threat to our coast, the Waffle House in Myrtle Beach closed, something you rarely see. And we'll have more on Hurricane Florence as it moves closer to the Carolinas. The Carolinas are bracing for Hurricane Florence. And you can see here from Carolina Beach, North Carolina, a spot normally packed with tourists, is now completely empty, which it should be because the governor telling everybody there along the coast to get out immediately. Yeah, just a, a really important thing to do for the safety of those people along the coast. I know my parents and some friends of theirs among those who evacuated Surfside Beach today. You really can't be too safe at this point. We're going to bring in Chief Meteorologist Kendra Kenton. Kendra, we've heard from both governors that we know a lot of people on the coast like to ride these things out, but they're saying this is one of those storms that they are not saying you should ever want to ride out. No, I mean, South Carolina for sure, especially though, those areas like Wilmington, Moorhead City, where we're going to see that direct impact from that incredible storm surge as the storm approaches as of 9 p.m. on Thursday. This is the American GFS model, and there's the eye of the storm as of Thursday night. It moves on shore, or at least kind of grazes the southern portion of the coast of North Carolina, pushes south into South Carolina, and then brings all that heavy rain inland. It's 10 p.m. Sunday and around about that time that we're going to have some of the heaviest rain moving across the western Carolinas and where the bullseye for heavy rain falls is still in question. Then it's going to start to calm down significantly by late Monday into Tuesday. Here's a look at the wind field. Of course, Wednesday still way out there, but as we head into Thursday, those hurricane force winds will be moving in on areas like Wilmington and then they start to shrivel up a bit. By the time we get into Saturday and Sunday, we're going to have tropical storm force winds out by the coast and then eventually that's all going to be pushing toward us but does not look like we would see sustained tropical storm force winds we do have a 40 to 60 percent chance of those gusts over 40 miles per hour and that's just showing you the darker purple that's where it's a guarantee to see tropical storm force winds then you move a little farther to the west 
it's a much lower likelihood. Um, biggest impacts, as we've talked about, right up along the South Carolina coast through Wilmington, even portions of the Outer Banks will be affected. Now, for tomorrow, no impact from the storm here, only a small rain chance, and that doesn't have to do with the hurricane. Uh, it looks like we're just going to have those afternoon pop-up storms, temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, feeling very tropical outside, and then we'll begin to feel effects from the storm as we head towards Saturday, Sunday, and then hopefully improving quite a bit. Monday. You can head to foxcarolina.com for interactive radar and our tropics tracker throughout this weekend and download the Fox Carolina News app. This is a great way to stay ahead of any updates that we get and we're going to be getting a big one coming up at about it's anywhere between 1045 and 11 usually from National Hurricane Center and it comes with a brand new track. So hopefully you'll stick with us and we'll bring that to you and to our app. Yeah, always interesting to see that new track, Kendra, and to kind of see what's the latest on how powerful this storm is and where it's yeah. headed. Yeah, we, and I'm just glad we're getting a little bit of agreement now, but we sure would like to see that uh, a storm just go away or fall apart. Sadly, it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen. All right, we'll see you in just a little bit. Well, there's so much to talk about with Hurricane Florence, and today we got the chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. Yeah, we caught up with him at GSP Airport before he was heading back to D.C., and here's what he had to say about Hurricane Florence. You know, I've seen a lot of these things, like most people in South Carolina. This is shaping up to be really, really bad. Uh, you could go without power for weeks, not days. If you fall down and get hurt, something happens to you, nobody's going to come and get you anytime soon because this is going to be devastating uh, in terms of the rain and the wind combined. He's warning everyone in the state to be on their toes, even those who aren't forced to evacuate, telling them if you don't act now, you have no one to blame but yourself. Senator Graham also mentioned hotels booking up across the state, saying at this point, if you haven't left, head straight to one of the many shelters open across the Palmetto State. And of course, there are people in hospitals trying to get moved right now inland as well. Yeah, hospitals all around our area are opening their doors to evacuees and new patients are slowly trickling in, which has caused some backup in emergency rooms. Fox Carolina's Kayla Convoy is live right now in our newsroom. And Kayla, how are they making room for these new evacuees? Well, that's been the tricky part for some hospitals. They're trying to discharge patient, patients as soon as they can, as soon as they're healthy and ready to go, because it's the bed space that's pretty hard to find. But hospitals want to keep the care coming so they can take in as many evacuees as they can. Greenville and Anderson hospitals tell me they're expecting more to come in tonight and tomorrow, mostly from the Grand Strand area. And right now, in order to make room, they are using hallways and wings of the hospital that aren't used very often to house those new patients. And they say they are trying to keep a close eye on this new track, preparing as much as possible, warning me that they do have medical supplies and generators to keep the hospitals open. We call in to the state twice a day to let them know what our capacity is. We're a little challenged at the moment. We have a number of patients waiting on beds in our emergency rooms. I'm sending out information to our medical staff to try and help uh, get a few more patients out if they're ready so we can take more people in if we need to. Other hospitals really not feeling the pressure just yet. Spartanburg Regional only had two patients earlier today, but just received another five, and they are expecting more evacuees in the coming hour. If you've been out on the roads a lot, you may have also noticed some of these ambulances going by. Yesterday, I was in Columbia. I saw two separate hospitals bringing patients in from the coast. It really just looks like a line of ambulances sticking together. And one I saw was 10 deep, and they had their lights on and were driving very fast to get those patients into another hospital as quickly as possible. Cody and Diana, back to you. Kayla, thanks so much for that. And of course, we'll have continuing coverage on how Florence might impact the upstate. We'll bring you the latest on air and online at foxcarolina.com on our Facebook page. And we do encourage you, go ahead and download the Fox Carolina app to get those notifications sent straight to your phone about the storm's movement. Well, Hurricane Florence, as you can imagine, put some football games into a timeout. The impact on the Clemson and Carolina games, plus Furman as well. We'll tell you what's changed coming up. Plus, a caravan of ambulances and a chain reaction crash. More on the wreck that caused a big backup on 85 tonight. And check it out. We're inside the Emergency Operations Center in Columbia. They are working around the clock, and you can see Hurricane Florence up there on the bottom right. They are tracking this hurricane live as they work around the state with those local officials as we all get ready for the impact of this major hurricane heading our way.
Welcome back. We are tracking Hurricane Florence, and it is already causing problems across the state and making a lot of changes, too. Football games of all levels are either being rescheduled or they're being canceled. And it includes Clemson and South Carolina. Now, Clemson has moved its kickoff time back to noon against Georgia Southern, so that is on Saturday. USC canceling their game against Marshall altogether. Furman and North Greenville also making that decision to cancel their game. And of course, Friday night football games have also been moved back. We have a full list of those games in our area that have changed at foxcarolina.com. We are updating that high school game list as we get new information in. But again, I can tell you right now, most of those games have been moved to tomorrow night just to make sure everyone is safe. And Greenville County Schools will be close monitoring the conditions as Florence approaches. As of right now, they've decided all of those Friday nights of Friday night events need to be wrapped up by 7 p.m., but they still have plans on having class throughout the week. At this point, if operations and transportation are running normally, that absence will be unexcused, um, but students will be allowed to make up the work in a timely manner. Um, but again, we're, we're getting that question a lot about if I choose to keep my child home, will that absence be excused? And if everything else is running normally, um, that absence will not be excused. But again, you're the parent. Uh, you make the best decision for your child and, and what's best for your family. Now, if for some reason school is canceled on Monday, a makeup day would be used, and the school district has three weather days to work with. Beth Brotherton, who you just heard from there, says it would be the first if it is needed. And of course, we'll be following any closings and delays as Florence makes its way here to the upstate over the weekend. So make sure you continue to check foxcarolina.com as well as our Facebook page and our Twitter page. And again, we encourage you to download the Fox Carolina News app. We are expecting power outages through the weekend. So if your power goes out and you can't watch us on TV, charge your phone and we'll send those alerts right to your mobile device. Well, a horrific scene in a Greer neighborhood. What police found inside a townhome there after a shooting this morning. And the hurricane is on its way, and people are rushing to the stores for generators. We'll tell you about the availability and also the options for you if you can't get one. That's coming up. And Kendra is standing by and monitoring the tropics tracker. That's right, and again, it keeps getting closer. We're talking about those outer rain bands reaching the North Carolina coast over the next few hours. Closed captioning sponsored by Bojangles. It's bow time. Well, of course, all eyes are on Hurricane Florence tonight, especially along the coast. This is a live look in an eerie, eerie Myrtle Beach, like a ghost town at this hour. But they have heeded the warnings and they have gotten out. And just look at this monster storm. Astronauts on the International Space Station are tweeting these photos, warning people on the East Coast to watch out for this storm. And we do want to get right over to Chief Meteorologist Kendra Kent for the latest track on Hurricane Florence. And Kendra, I know in the next 15 minutes to a half an hour, we'll have an even newer update on where the storm is headed. That's right. And, you know, there hasn't been a lot of change in our models when it comes to taking it up toward the North Carolina coast. But then what it does after that, the curve towards South Carolina, how far south it goes, that's really in question. At this point, we're looking at a Category 3 making landfall. And here's Here's just to give you an idea of what to expect as we see those categories go up. Of course, dangerous winds with a Cat 1. We may experience that on the South Carolina coast. But notice a Cat 3. That's where you begin to see trees uprooted, the major rise in water, winds between 111 and 129 miles per hour. Now, of course, beyond that, it gets even more extreme. But luckily, we're not talking about a Cat 4 or Cat 5 conditions at this point because of the fact that the storm is expected to weaken as it moves on land or at least closer to land. It just kind of meanders around. It's not going to move very quickly once it gets close to North Carolina. There it is with winds at 115 miles per hour. Give you a little perspective of what we're looking at. We're starting to pick up some of those rain bands not too far off the coast and that rain will pick up for areas like Wilmington and up toward the Outer Banks in the next I'd say 6 to 12 hours and then eventually it's going to slide by or make land fall along the lower North Carolina coastline and then move into our area as a tropical depression as we go into Sunday. There we go, a Category 3 storm around Wilmington as of Friday, Saturday, a Category 1 near Myrtle Beach. And then it's Sunday and Monday again where we're going to feel those impacts. And right now, as we look at the scale of our impacts, 
flooding is going to be the number one concern because of the fact that this storm will be down to a tropical depression. We're not talking hurricane or tropical storm wind necessarily, but there's going to be a lot of moisture left and it's not going to be a fast mover. This could lead to mudslides in the, in the mountains of western North Carolina. Gusty winds still enough to knock over trees and power lines. So we'll be watching out for those uh, power outages that Cody mentioned earlier. And we could still see isolated tornadoes that would most likely happen towards Sunday afternoon and evening. Now, of course, you want to Download our Fox Carolina News app to stay ahead of this storm as we go into the weekend. And, of course, we'll be here keeping you posted. Kendra, thanks so much, and we'll see you in just a little bit. Now, as the Carolinas continue to prepare, people from across the country are doing what they can to get help in fast. In Miami, the Coast Guard loaded up their helicopters and headed north, so they'll be ready to help as soon as they are needed. And volunteers in Pennsylvania have spent all day getting items ready to send to areas most impacted. Thousands of supply items have been packed up and are ready to ship out to the areas in need once Florence hits. And even from as far as California, search and rescue teams begin packing up to make their way to the East Coast. They say their sole mission, though, is to hit the ground as soon as they get there to start going through neighborhoods. And people are bracing for the storm as Hurricane Florence gets closer to the Carolina coast. People taking the evacuation orders seriously and many have already left following the governor's mandatory evacuation order yesterday. Some have decided to stick around and we're seen today boarding up their businesses and their homes. Locals say their biggest fear is the uncertainty of where the storm will hit and the damage it will leave behind. Like it goes down now is, is amazing and in a normal day we had a so much traffic and now this Barely we can see one car. Yeah, that's why the reason I told my wife, let's go walk on the boulevard to have a memory of what it looks now and see what's going to happen after this done. And one of the most popular attractions along the boardwalk is this, the Sky Wheel, which was also prepped for the storm. Crews removed the passenger cars on the Ferris wheel this morning as another precaution to get ready for Florence. We have been predicting this hurricane is unpredictable. It, it seems to change a little bit here and there. It's uh, making predictions uh, very difficult. If you are in one of those evacuation zones in these counties, you need to leave now. Well, the scene is similar across North Carolina as well, where homes and businesses have been boarded up along Carolina Beach ahead of the storm. Governor Roy Cooper reminding everyone this isn't going to be over anytime soon plan to be without power for days. Understand that the rain may last for days and not hours. And this may be a marathon, not a sprint. This storm threatens life. No matter where this storm comes ashore, it will have widespread significant impacts in North Carolina. Overall, the message has been the same across the Carolinas. Those in evacuation zones need to go inland. Yeah, this is in the scene of a neighborhood in Isle of Palms in South Carolina, but we've seen videos of fire trucks on their loudspeaker all along the coast, telling people to go ahead and get out and evacuate. And as we've seen, those evacuees are rushing to the upstate ahead of Hurricane Florence. Fox Carolina's Shell Ramin caught up with several of them today. So, Shell, we've seen businesses and we've really seen roads across the upstate filling up. You can see the congestion all around Greenville. Oh, without a doubt, Cody, if you were on I-85 earlier today, you know for yourself it was bumper to bumper, Woodruff Road, more congested than usual. And that's where I found a ton of evacuees who had to leave their homes in a hurry and really with only the bare necessities. Take a look at one family we spoke to. They had to call at least a dozen hotels in and out of the upstate to find a place to stay here tonight. They're from Wilmington and they grabbed only what they could last night and hit the road with three different families in those cars. They say they don't have much with them, but as long as they're all together, that's enough for them. They say they have other family and friends just scattered across the country trying to find someplace safe before this hurricane gets here. They're pretty bad because like what if we get back like from here, from where we're at, to back to North Carolina and um Leland. And if like what if you see like your house is not there and all that? That's a pretty bad feeling. Getting here, it was so difficult finding hotels. We had to go like 
I think we went like five times up and down to find a hotel. And while many are still searching for a place to stay here tonight, others like Catherine lucked out by having family inland. She's a nurse from Charleston and says she's on the relief team, which will go in to help patients after this storm hits. But for now, she's hunkering down here in the upstate. It's kind of scary because we actually just moved in in September. We built from the ground up. So to know that going home, we don't know what our, what will be, you know, what will be. Now, most of the evacuees I spoke to today say they'll head back home to the coast right around Sunday. But as far as what they will see when they get there, now you can imagine that's their biggest fear for right now. Cody and Diana, back to you.